Well, greetings, world, and greetings, Seven Spot, and greetings, greetings Mike, and greetings, Dave. How are? How is everybody? Many well, happy good. returns. <laughs> Did a bit of jet lag, but uh, I'm I'm alive. <laughs> That's really fantastic. So the reason why we're here is this is a low cost build show, and uh, you guys are low cost builders, but you guys are uh, taking a little bit of a, a different approach in that. Um, you're not building from scratch. All of you, uh, you have acquired somebody else's mistake, and then you made it your business to uh, to fill, finish the, finish the project. But not finishing somebody else's project, you're making your own project out of it. So I'm going to ask each uh, one of you to describe your project, and uh, and then afterwards we'll probably. Um, Take a look at. Oh, actually, well, I'll, I'll play a little slideshow, and you can tell us where you've been and where you you want to go. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is uh, low cost progress with Mike. So this is this is kind of how it was when you received it, because well, I can tell was, that because it's on on the trailers. So basically, the beams in the back were missing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there was still a little bits and bobs missing, which we have attached over the. Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. last year progress was very, very slow. I actually took it to my workplace because I thought, okay, on Sunday afternoon, I can stay a little bit longer. But mm -hmm. uh, I never really got any progress. So I decided to bring it back to my garage um, and go from there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so last, let's say, recent month, we or I got a little bit more progress, uh, found out some more things. That's the thing. When you, when you buy someone else's projects, which is not accordingly to the book, you will see some, you will have some surprises. So I yeah. found out that the rear axle didn't fit. Uh, I still have to think about uh, the pedal box where it might go. It feels, I had a test seat a couple of weeks ago uh, with mm -hmm. a simulated lowered floor, which was okay. However, mm -hmm. bearing in mind then, if you have a seat, the floor will go up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And uh, when I was sitting once in then a very early stage without a, a lowered floor it felt i had not enough space for my legs so mm -hmm. one of those things yeah um there may be some more beams which need to be moved um i bought a couple of weeks ago uh, a spare wheel holder from a caterum which looks good but i i have a feeling again I have to adapt my plan and perhaps even make one myself and yeah. so many little things Mm -hmm. um, which should trip just over it. And I, I don't know how long it takes. I mean, I want to finish ideally the welding by the end of British summer, when you can say that we never have a summer anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then well, you... uh, carry on with uh, possibly getting the engine in through the winter, wiring loom in. The idea was to actually finish the car by spring next year in order to get it then through the so-called IVA test. Um, IVA is basically a one-off test to make the car road legal. Um, I don't know if that ha how, how it works in the rest of the world, um, if they have this. So it's a one-off test, which the government checks and is the car road legal, is the car ready for the road, are mm -hmm. the lights, are the correct height, and so on and so on. It's, it's quite an intense thing. Actually, for those are, who are in UK, there's a really good video from MK Sports Cars about that. Actually, it's two videos. It's really worth to watch about the uh, IVA test. Um, for those who are coming new, um, you should also consider in the very beginning what you want to do. So, for example, um, bike engine versus car engine. You have to think if you go for bike engine, you need to have a pretty much long ratio now, back in the days, a Sierra diesel diff was easy to get. Those parts getting rare. Now, if you can get one, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, BMW parts are relatively cheap. However, the problem is there's no kit available, let's say, like from M MK Sports Cars, where you yeah. just convert it. Uh, because by law, you need to have a reverse gear yeah, mm -hmm. for this IVA test in UK. After that, it doesn't yeah. matter. But for that once, you need to have a reverse gear. Now, Quaifi, they're doing a reverse box, which is, again, very expensive. Those ones from Westfield, I've heard they're made out of chocolate. They yeah. break. So it's lots of things to consider before you start in order to avoid doing the same job twice and particularly spending money in the wrong direction. 
Yeah. Well, you mentioned somebody else's uh, uh, project. Could you just tell us when you picked up this uh, this space frame, um, what was the intention of the person um, that you purchased the the car from? What was what was their plan? What was what was their project about? And how does it differ from your vision? So uh, that guy, he wanted to create something modern with a rotary engine. Um, as far as I remember, he wanted to install a Mazda gearbox, possibly also Mazda differential, because it was very narrow on the back where the diff possibly could fit in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he had too many projects. Um, but also, I think <laughs> he has realized how difficult it is to make something which is not according to the book. And I think that at some point he was thinking, okay, well, let's just work around with some other normal road cars. So at this picture, I mean, obviously he, he was going with the uh, MX-5 um, uh, differential. And of course, this is a live uh, axle that you've got. Where, yeah. where, where did you source that? And, and how are you planning to do the install? So basically, that was, um, I found that rear axle on eBay in uh, Kent, not far away from the racetrack Brands Hatch, if you know that, back from the Formula One days, mm -hmm. um, it was fairly cheap. Um, it's possibly from a Cortina, I'm not 100% sure, because uh, most of the Ford Escorts, Mark 1 and 2, they should have the so-called English axle, mm -hmm. that's... Um, uh, that's a so-called Cologne or Köln axle, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. which normally should be just found in rest of Europe, in particular Germany. Hence the name Köln. Köln, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Which people say in the forums is not that strong. However, I'm not planning to have uh, 200 brake horsepower, so well, that's my approach it... will be to make a replica of an old car. Yeah, and yeah. and that's what, where I was going with this. You know, he was going. I understand it with a. Was he planning to do a rotary engine? And then, what are you doing? If you you, what engine are you using, and what transmission? So basically, I will use a sixteen hundred so called cross flow, um, which was found in Cortina Capri's mm -hmm. um, Mark II Escorts. Uh, also later on, in a slightly different version in Ford Fiestas, uh, later Ford Escorts, but then obviously as a transverse engine. Um, the gearbox as well is coming from a Cortina or Capri. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a so-called Ford Type 3 gearbox, uh, not a Type 9. Um, again, I'm not putting 200 brake horsepower through, so I can use pretty much yeah lower-rated gearboxes. So this is a tourer ones. instead of a track car? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I will do probably some, but well, there's one hill climb nearby mm -hmm. once a year, which is for road cars. It's, it's more or less a show-off. You've got yeah. a little bit straight, some curves, um, where can accelerate the car, and that's pretty mm -hmm. much it. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just looking at the placement of uh, the... Um, the differential and the, uh, as it's sitting in the car, there you you've obviously moved one of the um, uh, the vertical uh, bars, and mm -hmm. and it it does have does it have a, a narrower tunnel than you mentioned? It was a designed for an MX five uh, differential. Is that a standard width tunnel, or is that uh, has it been narrowed? That is a little bit more narrow. However, I measured it. I also pre-installed the prop shaft, and uh, that's now lining up. So I had to to change the other beam as well around. That's a good thing because uh, as as uh, Dave is sitting there in the background, he had a has a similar situation as we're all. Uh, I'm going to say. Uh, well-sized people <laughs> having a, a seat that you can actually climb into is an important thing um and i know that dave you had uh, um a, a, in yours you had an undersized seat and you're you're developing a, a, a larger seat to sit on is that right uh yeah i had like uh pro car sport seats that have like a mm -hmm. 14 and a half inch opening to sit in yeah. Uh, and now I've got a pair of 914 seat pans that I found on eBay. Yeah. So they're, they're bare fiberglass and I'll just do a little bit of a patch and then I will probably foam them in and they'll get skinned in carbon and then I'll make my upholstery from there. There you go. Um, 
similar, similar to, to what the current care seats, the, current seats, the mm -hmm. cloth seats. But uh, as we're sitting here looking at this, this is uh, with your differential, uh, Mike, and and uh, maybe uh, Dave, you, you can um, take note of this because you are going, uh, Dave, to put uh, an MX5. Um, uh, differential and rear suspension in yours, and I'm taking it that uh, yours has an extra wide tunnel in it right now, or is, have you measured that? Um, since mine came as a bike engine build, mm -hmm. uh, there's no those vertical um, aspect that that Mike has in his around the nose of the diff are not even there on mine. So okay, and since I'm bolting in the whole Miata subframe. Mm -hmm. Some of that uh, can be avoided. I'll only have to make a mount that grabs the bottom of the diff, mm -hmm. um, just like the like the PPF does when it's in mm -hmm. a Miata. So mm -hmm. I think that might be a little bit easier. And th there's a lot of room, since mine is going to be mounted more forward than most people that are trying to uh, put a whole Miata rear subframe in. I've moved mine almost two inches forward, so the mount is actually in front of the rear bulkhead. Okay, the, got it. The, the front two tabs, it, it'll, it'll make sense. I don't know if there's a, a picture in my uh, little slideshow thing, but um, it also, just from the fender size, will actually make it look normal. Mm -hmm. You know how, like, when the fender comes down on the, the back of uh, a lot of them, it, it's before the curve of the rear, like the trunk area. Mm -hmm. And if I leave the subframe where it would naturally mount aft of the rear bulkhead, the fenders come all the way to the back, like past the curve. So it looked really strange. And since, you know, my whole thing is in pieces, I just said, all right, what happens if I slide my subframe forward and I got that extra two inches? It shortens the wheelbase down back down to like 92, 93, mm -hmm. up down from like 98 where it was before. And it gives me room to put normal, normal size, like a 30 inch, 30 inch distance a fender on there. Yeah, well, th that brings us to a different different point of discussion. Now, here's one thing I, I noted, uh, uh, Mike, in, in yours, and I can relate to it. In in even though mine was a, a kit, it came with a, a Ford T bird di differential in it, and it, and like yours, if if I if it was uh, on a standard. Um, uh, uh, space frame, it would not have uh, fit. And this particular portion that I'm tracing over right there, I had to do some bashing <laughs> to make it to make it uh, uh, fit. But you've actually uh, you've chopped and and welded in uh, one, two, three different portions to it to make it uh, make it work. Yes, yes, and no. That's a little trick. What you can do is you don't need to chop everything. Mm -hmm. So I cut out the rear piece. Yeah. So by what I did actually first thing was I cut a little V but left part on the back. So okay. I could move it over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the, the, that one which faces actually uh, um, the prop shaft wasn't touched or drive mm -hmm. shaft as, as you say wasn't yeah. touched. So just had more or less than to to weld then a little um, part of box steel in in between. Yeah. To to cover it up. Um, which was yeah quite handy because otherwise you do yeah you have to cut and yeah I I, I was just feeling as an easier approach to be honest. Well, it looks great, but it brings us to a, an, another uh, topic of discussion and one uh, of discovery for people who are building, uh, especially people who are are not building from the book but uh, doing an abrogation like you guys are. Um, it's you know how wide is the space frame versus how wide is the the um, the differential on on yours, Dave. You you have a you ca yours came with a live axle and it had gobs of extra space. But the MX five is has been causing you some concern about um, how it's going to fit on on that. Yours is it, yours is a McSorley, so it's a, it's a different dimension from from what Mike's got. Yeah, my frame is forty six inches to the outside of the outer rails and mm -hmm. each seat box is 19 inches so at least they're symmetrical which i had some concerns about i was wondering if one would be wide and one would be extra narrow but they're both mm -hmm. 19 inches and i think uh i had a ford mustang 98 something um like an sn95 mustang solid axle i believe 
Well, let's um, look, bring your yours in, and we'll just take a peek at what you've got. Yours, this is kind of this is two looking at your project two years of, uh, back. Uh, is this on your property, or is this as no, as you found it? This is at the guy's spot where I took the U-Haul truck to get it, mm -hmm. and uh, so we decided I would. I brought these wheels home because he had another set of wheels that actually looked way cooler. I really wanted them. They were like 20 spoke, really neat looking, but they yeah. wouldn't go over the um, the hub bore on the front hubs was oh, too yeah. big. And these yeah. are apparently uh, Mustang 2 spindles. I thought they were 98 Mustang mm -hmm. spindles, and I posted them like that on Facebook Marketplace, and a guy quickly corrected me. So that was good. Mm -hmm. um, but they're they're gone now, as are the... A arms, but you can see it had live axle and uh, uh, the track rod for yeah. all of that. And like, probably I should have just finished the build from here. Yeah. But why do something the right way when you can do it my way? <laughs> so I, and it was fine, but this axle, this axle also has way less offset. It's only like half inch or less than one inch. The Miata offset is a little more. But yeah. just in, I don't know if you can, I don't even think any of these pictures like you can actually see, but um, there, there's so much room back there, right? As you approach the real, the rear bulkhead, mm -hmm. um, like if you're looking from the side of the car, you know, the bulkhead is like this, but there are no vertical tubes in the bottom half at all. So yeah. it was just floating in there. It, I'm sure rigid enough for what it was going to be because it has, um, what are they called? Uh, swedge tubes everywhere. It had it for for like track toe you know how you do that with a live axle where you just like for alignment everything mm -hmm. was done with swedge tubes uh in the rear and i actually stole two of them to mock up my current uh push rod front suspension which yeah. may or may not work yeah because um, this you mentioned the, the push rod you this was already installed or at least not the push rods but the um, this is it was a roller when you got it Yes. Yeah. It was rolling in the guy who was, who originally built the frame, I believe is on low cost USA. He's like six, four, six, five. And, uh, you know, if you've been around the seven spot channel, you've seen me talk about this before, but he was very tall and it had an R1 engine in it. Um, so no provision for reverse. So I, you know, I, I decided I, this is mostly going to be a road car for me. I wasn't going to only track it cause I want to fool around uh, and be able to, you know, take a single person at a time for a ride or whatever, drive it to school where the kids could see it. And, um, and it's all QA1 um, coilovers, which is fine. Right now, I, in my picture later in the thing, uh, I have the R1 shocks that I got on eBay just so I could get the linkages, the uh, the bell cranks for those that are that are pre-made. Um, and I've swapped out the whole. Now there's located the full Miata front subframe too, because you know uh, I can lose 60 pounds. I'll let the 60 pounds be in the car and be very rigid and, you know, engineered by someone else. So I don't have to fiddle with it. Um, but there, there were a lot of things that were, are really handy on this. The uh, little cross tubes for the suspension mounts, the upper mount points are going to come in really handy for bracing. It's like a uh, one and a half inch, like 120 wall square tube that's notched and welded in. It's got a weird, um, it's a bit of a weird configuration, but it's going to come in handy. Uh, for what I have to do currently. And I don't really have to move. I move some things to get the transmission in because obviously with the bike engine, the transmission tunnel was normal height. Um, so I, I didn't have to move any of that. But yeah, with the whole rear subframe, it locates a diff for me. So I'm, I'm a little bit locked in there, but it'll make some things easier. Mike, where did you, are you using a factory prop shaft from some? Uh, so yeah, well, basically my one is not finished yet. I bought parts because the rear axle is different from that part, from the front part. Um, so the front part came from a type nine gearbox, which I don't use. So the nose is different. I had to buy another nose from a Ford Capri, um, which I, I got it on my car already. <clears throat> so to adapt everything, um, I just saw a week ago, a prop shaft which might fit from a low cost uh, with the right nose and mm -hmm. definitely with the right flange um, well around an hour's driving from me which I go for a hunt next week um, mm -hmm. will save me a little bit time cut and weld plus that front nose which I have from the prop shaft needs new bearings mm. pretty much for the same price of a of a, a, a bearing 
I can get eventually the whole prop shaft, which is already cut to size. But I just mm -hmm. need to install it, which, again, as you said, uh, saves me some time and some sweat. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you, we were talking about uh, the difference between the original builder's plans and, and what you're doing. And Mike has pointed out that he's building a cruiser and it's not going to have the rotary engine. It's, uh, it, it's basically going to be what he wants to have. And Dave, <laughs> what engine and transmission are you using? Well, I'm using a K24 Honda engine and the transmission out of an S2000. And I think I've just found adapters that'll take a S2000 to a 1013 or 1031, whatever, like a Jeep drive shaft, like a very standard Dodge America drive shaft. And there's a flange for the Miata output flange of the diff too. So if I can get these two adapters, then I can just get a 1031 shaft. I don't, you know, won't have slip yoke and all this other things that I may or may not need, but with the independent rear suspension, the diff nose should be locked in place relatively and the transmission tail should be locked in place relatively. So I should be okay with the little wobble in the two, um, in the two rubber mounts for that to switch to that size drive shaft, which is much easier to find because then I can just get a, you know, a 26 or 27 and a half inch 1031 drive shaft. They're, they're available in a lot of places. I think I can even get one at Speedway Motors um, over here. I don't, I don't remember if you're, you're familiar with them too, but they do like dirt track, a lot of dirt track and sprint car stuff. So all of the, all the U.S. guys are in, end up buying their like screw in ball joints and things. They're, that's what was on this already, the Pinto spindles and all that. So hopefully those things will bolt together with just using adapters instead of having custom plates made to match the S2000 eight bolt uh, drive shaft with a smaller pattern to the four bolt Miata input. It's, I think adapting it to something that's way more common is gonna be the easiest way for me. Well, this is really cool that we're getting the opportunity to get together here, guys. And and uh, let's be frank, what, what we really would like to do at 7 Spot, and I'm sure on your individual channels, is we want to develop um, a conversation. Because in my case, it's not about me. I, I built mine from a kit. It's just basically a big uh, mechano uh, project. But I do think that we will all benefit. And I'm, when I'm speaking about all of us, I'm talking about the larger community. We'll all benefit by having the opportunity to have some conversation and what i'm hoping to do uh, i'm going to make a copy of this and send you guys a duplicate of the video so that uh, we can uh, perhaps bring more people in to discuss their projects so that we can uh, add to the conversation is that something that you guys would would consider yeah sure absolutely yeah definitely even if we even if we get manufacturers to talk about what you know i don't mind being told what i'm doing wrong yeah no that's good actually i was speaking to um a, a manufacturer or a kit car manufacturer in ohio recently and uh, we're planning to do a little bit of uh, work together so i'll be bringing you dave along on on that conversation as it evolves uh, if you're interested because it'd be a similar um time zone oh yeah for sure and i found a stalker frame for sale on um on Facebook Marketplace here, somebody had just, it just was a roller, mm -hmm. but the, even the, the layout of the tubes and all of this, and it, it's so different. Yeah. And when they, even when they do their little profile ride around, they, they have one that you can get with a K20 in it, which is why I was interested in seeing how it was set up and mm -hmm. it, everything is laid out like it's very sturdily made. Yeah. I don't know, I'm surprised <laughs> at how few tubes there are in, in some of these frames. Mike, was yours a Haynes build or a regular book frame? Uh, my one came from the Haynes build one, uh, but it was the first one, Ron Champion, which is that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's with a live rear axle. <clears throat> just, just a few things. Now that you said it, I don't know if you're aware of the sports car manufacturer Malloc. They have a similar layout. Have a look. Yeah. Uh, let's say type in Malloc MK27. 
they were really popular in the 80s. They had a race series called Clubmans. It's still running yeah. nowadays in UK. Yeah? They yeah. are kind of similar to the low cost ish apart I mean if you see the frame there's yeah. so many more beams in they're so proper stiff but then uh, the 7 well was <laughs> designed in the 50s and uh, compared to nowadays to a off road race car yeah <clears throat> well that's pretty cool now your background mike is is you obviously know your way around different space frames because you were a builder uh, of cars before you got into this. You were uh, in Formula V, were you not? Yeah, so basically I uh, well, I had over the years lots of projects, um, but I never built anything completely from scratch. So yeah. that's perhaps one of the deepest projects. Uh, I always bought, well, my last Formula V project also was a chassis, mm -hmm. uh, which I sold on then for another car. Um, then I started another project, which was called the Race Kids Falcon for uh, the category is called 750, Formula 750 in UK. Yeah, uh, yeah and I'm helping a friend of mine uh, with this Formula V, so uh, which you can see here in the uh, background. Ah, so there it is. So Lee yeah. Stone. So the, obviously yeah. the, uh, the bodywork is partially missing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I guess the, the 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 this point of the conversation is where do we go from here? And what I would like to do is kind of uh, bring us along when the time is right for you guys and try to uh, I try to do it in a forum where I can collect more people to add to the conversation. Now, folks, what we have done in the past is uh, we've done webinars on building low cost, and mm -hmm. I'm going to. Uh, suggest that perhaps we use the same format again. What do you think of that, Dave? Oh, yeah, the one with uh, Steve and Al that we did uh, was... Uh, I still have to go back and watch things and check and like, what did I, what did they say? What are they using? Because, you know, you can never remember everything that we just mentioned. Yeah, but I think it's a great format because we can have a whole bunch of people join the program and they can, uh, they'll be exclusive interested and it won't be just a bunch of people just entertaining themselves so people guys who are actually in the process or about to join the process of building yeah. their own car so i think that is the perfect format for us to move towards i think i think personally it's a really good idea however mm -hmm. what, I, what i was missing so far perhaps we should start from the very beginning to show someone the consideration what do i want what do i expect and what mm -hmm. way i'm going that's yeah. a perfect idea. Yeah. So, guys, what do you think? Shall we end our little um, our, our foray into the future uh, mm -hmm. about here? And I'm going to ask, you know, stay online until this totally uh, uploads because mm -hmm. uh, it, it goes to the servers in, individually and uh, we'll save it. And I'll, I'll send you a copy uh, to uh, each one of you by Dropbox. Yeah, for sure. That, that... Okay, guys, we will see you at 7 Spot. See you soon on 7th right. Spot. Fantastic. Bye, guys. Bye.